Kimberly from the Fat Corner Shop and we have Carrie Nelson from Miss Rosie's Quilt Company and Moda Fabrics and I'm going to just start off with all of the like business stuff, all the things that I think you're going to ask because I know all the questions that y'all guys are going to ask and then we're just going to open the floor for her. So first her new book Summer Moon that we published is um, coming out. The book should be at Fat Quarter Shop and at the distributors around February 14th, Valentine's Day, maybe a couple of days early. Um, so this is her quilt. We had a block of the month available. They're both sold out now, but I'm just gonna show you the quilts. This was the um, vintage version. And um, sometimes you'll ask about my piece backing. So here's this one. It's just leftovers from the front that I throw on the back and then y'all are gonna ask the label I got that from uh, the Sweetwater label club it's upside down but that's okay so that is now sold out but of course you can make this with any kind of scraps which is the whole purpose of the book so that is the modern version and Gina tell uh, put this together for us and then Carrie um, has this wonderful book called Pen Pals. Um, I'm going to show you some of that. I do want to announce Threadology Quilt is now down to 14. We've only got 14 left, so those will probably be gone by Monday. Um, so I'm going to let her talk about her Pen Pals book. And while she's talking about it, I'm going to show you like some of the really nice detail in her pin cushions because my stitches aren't like this. <laughs> They're not as good as this. <laughs> The Pin Pals came about uh, about a year and a half ago when a lovely quilter, Amanda Jean Nyberg, Crazy Mom Quilts, did a daily pincushion challenge. She is this glorious modern quilter and so she was doing all this wonderful improv stuff. I of course had to use blocks because that's what I do and people would be asking, is there going to be a pattern for that? Is there going to be a pattern for that? And Jennifer Keltner of Martingale kept thinking she's going to answer in the columns, you know, I can arrange that. So long story short, that's how the book came about. The idea was just some of what I have learned over the years making pin cushions. And somebody had asked how many I made, probably over 200. I give most of them away. There are several of these that already have somebody's name on it. Uh, so they're just fun to make. I think the biggest enjoyment is you get to use teeny little scraps and even the swoon one, uh, which I always call it swoon because that's Camille's block. Uh, yes, I know it's a, in a block book, but the way that she constructed it was completely original. Anyways, um, even that one, you can make it in a couple of hours and it takes longer to cut it out than to actually piece it. Um, there's a couple of things. We will be doing some uh, videos about some of the stitching. I just use the edge of my presser foot as my guideline, but I'm a big fan of the Aurafil 80 weight thread for it because it's about the balance and proportion. I just like the way it looks on there. And so 80 weight's like a little bit thinner than the 50 weight and it's used for uh, applique, but a lot of people use it for quilting. Uh -huh. And like if you were looking at the stitching up close, I asked her, that was the first thing I asked is, oh my gosh, which machine did you stitch this on? Because the stitches are so pretty. My stitches wouldn't be this pretty. <laughs> That's what's also nice with the Aurafil 80 weight. It, it hides a few mistakes. Uh, because it is so fine, some of the things, some of the mistakes that make don't show up. There's probably a few of them in there where it's like, yeah, don't look too close. Um, my favorite one is probably this one because if you look in the book, um, you can show, if you show there's one corner there that I poked through when I was turning it oh. and <laughs> I could have turned it back around and stitched and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to darn this. Nobody would even, and, I wouldn't have noticed that the But that's it. my favorite thing about it is the, the imperfection of some of them. Uh, somebody recently used a term that I love that's, they have the human touch. Uh, so it's just, they were fun piecing together scraps and 
I like the way it looks when the back is quilted. Uh, doesn't have to be, but I like that. Yeah, and so like she's got quilting on the back, um, just stitches on the back of all of them. And then um, from her book, we had a companion pattern put together that was in our Sew mm -hmm. Sampler box in November, just so you know. So if you're a Sew Sampler member, um, this kind of goes with it. Uh, and then also we have a couple of kits left over for the store if you're interested in that. And then now I think we're just going to open the questions to Carrie. I mean, she's like an expert in so many things and has been in the industry <laughs> a really long time. So I think we should open it up for questions. I feel really old. But no, but. <laughs> well, I think we all do. But, but you know, but it's funny because I think I started like a year or two before you did. Yeah. So I remember. <laughs> yeah, my wedding anniversary is in a couple of days, so 16 years back quarter shop. Oh, happy anniversary. Thanks. Oh, Tell Kevin, God. email him and say, get her a gift. Um, first question. Two dozen roses. Yeah, I don't want that. And diamonds. <laughs> Lots of diamonds. Um, so we had some people submit questions uh, beforehand. First one was from Pam on Facebook. She says, Carrie, have you ever thought about designing fabric? Um. I did several years ago, just curious, and did two collections, and okay, that was fun, interesting, not my thing. Um, some people have it as a real talent, a very distinctive style. I think you can see somewhat from the fabrics, even in the pin cushions. I like sewing with a lot of different things, so for me to do it, you'd have to be 120 pieces in the collection, and yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> so yeah, no interest in doing it. Oh, well, and she just says she loves your patterns. Well, thank you very much, Pam. <laughs> uh, lots of people were like, I want to do the same thing. Um, and then lots of people were also asking, uh, are there going to be tutorials for the Summer Moon book? Yes, uh, we filmed those. There's one tutorial for each of the 24 blocks. Uh, I'll get to share with you some of the things that I did, including, yes, one or two of them. There uh, might or may not be a seam ripper in the picture because it's really easy to get pieces turned around. Ask me how I know. But yes, we've done tutorials for all of the blocks and for the finishing and kind of introduction and some of the techniques. So those tutorials are going to be kind of like tips and tricks, mm -hmm. um, like cheat things you can do with the book. And they're going to start releasing in May because they're going to correspond with our block of the month, which is now sold mm -hmm. out. Um, but uh, so in May, and uh, the book will be here in February. And we'll be doing a sell along. <laughs> yes. Uh, so because of the block of the month is sold out, how can people still join in if they want to? So basically, um, I would just uh, start with the Fat Quarter Bundle, uh, mm -hmm. find some collections you like, maybe two collections, get some maybe half yard of like 10 backgrounds. Um, we can post on our blog if you would like, like the fabric requirements. But really it's just a scrappy quilt mm -hmm. and that's what I do. For example, with Lori Holt's Sew Along, she's just doing an impromptu sew along. And so many of you have asked like, uh -huh. hey, what's the fabric requirements? There aren't any. I just grab whatever and make do. Mm -hmm. And then if I make a mistake, which I did already, <laughs> I just have to buy more or, change it <laughs> but I mean I think that's kind of like go with the flow mm -hmm. just start with a fat quarter bundle yep. uh, maybe two and just pick and choose and then like I said like the leftovers I threw leftovers on my mm -hmm. back and so many of you guys ask what do I do with my leftovers throw them on the back make uh -huh. some pin cushions um, make the pinwheel patchwork pinwheels that we're doing this year mm -hmm. um, that's Justin's idea um, there's so many things you can do with leftovers, so I don't feel like you have to be so worried about, like, what do you start with? I think people are so worried about, like, mm -hmm. like regimented, like, what do I start with? And so that's mm -hmm. one thing that I learned maybe a couple of years ago, because I used to be that way with Lori, and she would say, Kim, <laughs> just get some fabric. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I, I can't do that. She's like, just get a bundle. Just start. And so then I kind of learned, once you do it a couple of times, it won't feel so regimented, I guess. That's it. And so much of this is supposed to be fun. And some days you're in a, in a mood to know this is going to be very even. And other days, no, use leftover pieces. And I think the fun of it is also to challenge yourself to start getting outside the box and yes. just start. In fact, those are the great words. Stephen Jobs, just reading about that, that that 
for anything you do, just start. So yeah. dive in. And I like the idea of even um, even if you got fat eight the bundles and got two yeah. or three in mixed collections, mm -hmm. that's a great way to get something really scrappy and wonderful. And so. just I think just start with what you like. Like if you uh -huh. like a fabric, start with that. Don't feel like because Kimberly Jolly is sewing with the fabric, you got to sew with that. No, mm -hmm. whatever you like, oh, whatever on, we colors. all want to make it that way. No, I mean, <laughs> but you know, just whatever you like. <laughs> If mm -hmm. you have it, you can make it work. Yep. And then um, the pin cushion, I don't know if I said this, but the pin cushion videos will come out in the next month or so. So those mm -hmm. are going to come out before the summer moon videos. Mm -hmm. So you'll have something to tide you over. Yes. <laughs> uh, and then Sharon on Facebook says, Carrie, how did you get started in quilting? I was a garment sewer. Uh, I learned to do that fairly young. Tall girl, you know, before they had tall sizes, things like that. Um, so I started with garment sewing, and now to make myself feel really old, the bicentennial, all of a sudden you were seeing quilts everywhere. And I thought, well, I can do that. So I used something from a good housekeeping magazine, and I made this block that defied geometric description. Uh, scissors, <laughs> templates, yeah, they didn't work out very well. So uh, years later, I was actually living in Dallas, and I had been into this quilt shop and then finally took up, got up the nerve and signed up for a class. And my first quilt was a sun and shadow quilt. And I like to tell it was fun because everybody was doing these really pretty floral and soft color palettes. And I was doing this Crayola solid Amish thing that wasn't really, because it was really bright. And in the process, halfway through, mine looks like a windsock. Everybody else is making quilts. I've got this thing. But I finished the quilt top. I absolutely loved it. I machine quilted it myself a couple days later. And I was totally hooked. So that's how I got into starting quilting. All right. Um, and then we have a question on Instagram from Caffeinated Cotton. Do you have a dog now? I miss Rosie. I miss Rosie too. Uh, I don't yet, but um, I put it this way, I'm, I'm getting near the precipice uh, in that I'm already thinking, okay, what kind, and trying to work it out. I'm trying to convince Mr. Dunn that we need a bring your dog to work policy, but given that I'm not too far from the warehouse door, I'm thinking liability issues. So yeah, <laughs> but I'm probably getting one soon. Awesome. And more? Lori on Facebook wants to know, when you starch fabrics, do you use spray starch or liquid starch? I use both. Uh, a lot of times it depends what I'm doing, it depends what's handy. Um, I use both. And the one thing I do is, because you can buy those big bottles of, what is it, Stay Flow, I make it a little bit thinner. Um, it is really nice for starching small things uh, or jelly roll strips. It can just dip it and hang it up. So, so I just use spray starch. <laughs> but yeah, I use spray starch more than the other. But I have the other just just in case I haven't been someplace where it's been on sale. <laughs> uh, and then Karen on Facebook was asking, "Do you still design for Miss Rosie's Quilt Company, and will there be more patterns?" I do. A lot of it is now through Moda, but there are still Miss Rosie patterns. And so, yeah, there are more coming. Uh, some of what have done lately, it, it's better suited for a project sheet, but it's there are other things working on some new things that yes come. So like <laughs> when you see Moda kits, like mm -hmm. the ones that are prepackaged, a lot of them are designed by her. Um, mm -hmm. Might not have her name on it, but like I saw one the other day and I was like, oh, I know that I know that Carrie just like that. <laughs> like you know, you can just kind of tell. Mm -hmm. It was red and white, and it was the Cineberry, and I was like, I know that. Uh -huh. it, so the fun are some of them though that people don't realize. You remember the Merrily quilt that was the houses that Gingerbird's Christmas oh, uh -huh. collection? I did that one. It was like no, and it was like yeah. Those kinds were fun to play around the outside the box thing. Uh, and then Karen also wanted to know what are your favorite tips for piecing, choosing colors, and storing quilts? For piecing. It's going to be a couple things. I, for piecing, I think some of it starts with being accurate with your cutting. That's where starching can help. 
I would also say don't obsess. It's some of it is your personality that if you're the kind of person that likes it to be absolutely perfect then you have to understand it's cutting it's your seam allowance it's your pressing all of those things go together but as i've gotten older and need readers you know there's some things i'm letting go of okay if it's a sixteenth of an inch off on that seam allowance by the time that's quilted you're not going to see it um, so for a piecing tip, know your machine, know what your seam allowance is, and really work on being accurate with your cutting. And sometimes that means going back and doing the practice pieces of, you know, two strips or three strips and measure and probably continue to measure your pieces as you're going along. All right. And then what was the other part? I don't remember what the other storing part was. Storing quilts. Storing quilts, yes. Storing quilts. Um, I confess I've got, I hang some. I use the curtain rods. Some get rolled up and put in baskets. Some are stacked. I think the biggest thing is you do have to take them out and refold them. Um, and ha Okay, people would tell you once a month, but it's you, the, every couple of months. Just for the creases. Just for the creases. And also um, understand that if you're gonna have them really stored, you might wanna consider a glass front cabinet because two of the things that can be the most damaging are dust and light. So it looks really nice to see them in a, you know, by a sunny window. Make sure the sun isn't directly on them or non-glare glass or there are things you can do, but that would be long term. Right. And mostly use them. <laughs> uh, number one question in the comments right now is, what do you use to stuff your cushions? <laughs> I use crushed walnut shells. Um, it's one of the things that have used. I like the weight of it. I like the way it feels. But I know there are a lot of people with nut allergies. So the other thing you can use is sand. There's two kinds of sand that, you, that are the best options because both have been sterilized and cleaned. One is play sand, which you'll probably get like at Home Depot or the hardware store and you use to fill a sandbox. The downside of that is I think they sell it in 20 pound bags and it's a lot. The other one is sold like usually where they sell the fish stuff at the pet store. Um, somebody called it calcium carbonate, I don't know, but anyways, it's the sterilized sand for fish tanks, get the white. Um, that works really nicely because it comes in a smaller bag. Both have a nice texture to it. Uh, they have a nice weight. The sand is, if anything, a little heavier. Emery is an option. Uh, it used to be harder to find. You can find it now. Sawdust is what they used old fashioned. It's really nice and firm, but it's really hard to stuff. So I use crushed walnut shells, but I also recommend sand. All right, and then we had another question come in. Um, this person says they bought your patterns for so long because they're so cute, but she's never, she never made many because the pieces are so <laughs> tiny. Um, what made you come up with that? Do you use triangle paper? Um, yes, I use triangle paper. I uh, started using it many years ago and I go back and forth with it depending on what the project is. And oh, by the way, I actually cake mixes. It's triangle paper. Uh, so that's something specifically for layer cakes. But I think it depends on the project. If you need a whole bunch that are the same fabric combinations, go with the triangle paper. It's faster and easier. If you want really scrappy, other methods work better. Not better, but as well. <laughs> and do you know how many patterns total you've designed? Do you know how many you've designed? No, but I would say you've probably designed over 400. <laughs> uh, actually, not that many, but it's but then there are times I think, well, no, but then there was these for but the books, the and there was for this magazines. Stuff. All the magazines. So maybe as many as 400. I was trying to think. I know there were about 140 Miss Rosie patterns, and then there was like 84 schnibbles, and, and then, you know, so I mean, there's some, and then there's the ones with Moda. So probably quilts. 
400 patterns, maybe 300. So. And uh, she says, can you tell us more about how you photograph the quilts to produce cute pattern covers? I hire professionals. <laughs> no, really, for so many years, that was it because there's the debate between should you do the really pretty styled shot, which we all love because then we envision this is how I would use the quilt, but then people also want a flat shot, and a flat shot is much, much harder than you would think. Um, we don't all have a setup like Meredith, uh, American Patchwork, where you actually have a white room and you can a camera up above and you lay it on a floor. That's ideal. Uh, so for the rest of us, it's um, Photoshop and straightening and professionals and that's as good as it's going to be. <laughs> All right. Um, and then Margaret on YouTube says, 88 thread, how does that handle as far as the machine? I think you mentioned that when talking about the oh, machines. I have never had any yeah. problems with it with tension it at all. It works just the same. It does. It just, it's almost like, um, I would treat it exactly the same. I'd put it in the top mm -hmm. and the bobbin. It's do just you? thinner. Yeah, I do. Do you put something different in the I bottom? use just, I just use the 50 weight in the bottom, because especially okay. with I'm doing it quilting. Um, but I'm going to have to try that now. Yeah, I just <laughs> use it like normal. Uh-huh. But it gives a thinner um, look, mm -hmm. so you can make your stitches a little bit smaller, mm -hmm. and then it's not as clumpy. And the reason I like it for the pin cushions is I think it's somewhat about proportion, and I can do a lot of quilting on it and not cover it with thread. Um, so it's a personal preference. It also means that on some I can play with a color, but it is a subtle touch, it doesn't really stand out. So it's, and the wooden spools are just adorable. So it's another thing to collect. <laughs> All right, we've got a few questions uh, regarding the pin, uh, pin cushions. Uh, Nito is asking, when do you say the Pin Pals book will be available? It's available now. It's available now. In stock now. So <laughs> Kate can put a link to you. Mm -hmm. And somebody said that they heard that sand and walnut shells dull pins, is that true? It doesn't. Um, both I crushed, it sharps them. Sharp crushed them. walnut shells can sharpen them. What, what you have to be careful with on all of them is if you're using the pin cushion all the time, you're not going to really have any problems with the pins. But if you have pins in them and you've got it out decoratively, um, then yes, both crushed walnut shells, sand, even emery and sawdust, they will break down the plating on the pin, which is what people will think dulls them because now it's not sliding as easily and it's because the plating on the pin itself is breaking down. And that's just over time. And yes, it's from the oil in the walnut shells, the oil that probably is still in the sawdust, some, and just the minerals and all that stuff that's in the whatever you're using for stuffing. So. But if you're using them all the time, it's not a problem. And somebody else said that they heard that to sharpen pins, use Dove soap. Do you know if that's true? That's not one I've heard, but then I've also heard to sharpen your scissors using aluminum foil. And some people think it's great and it works. Um, so yeah, it's put it this way. It's something that'd be worth trying, although I'm not going to try the sharpening my scissors with aluminum foil thing. Yeah. <laughs> And then on the subject of 80 weight thread, do we have larger spools of 80 weight? No, it only comes in one mm -hmm. size. Um, Arthel has produced all colors of it. Um, so they have like 336 colors or something like that. And all of those colors <gasps> are, however many they have, they have an 80 weight, but they're all the small spool, mm -hmm. all of them. There's not a, like 40 mm -hmm. weight and 50 weight come in the, the cones mm -hmm. and there's no other. Um, if it helps, if you're thinking you need bigger spools, I do most of my quilting with probably about four or five very neutral shades. And this earlier this year, no, I guess the end of last year, I finally used up my first spool of the cream white. Yeah, it's thinner, so it takes a lot longer to use mm -hmm. than it looks uh -huh. like. And you're, and I don't. I have not done regular piecing with it, um, 
I suppose you could. I don't know why you'd need to or want to because the 50 weight, weight works so beautifully. It's going to be applique, some machine quilting things that you're going to do. So it's going to last a pretty long time. It's got a lot of thread on there. Yeah. And does Pack Quarter Shop carry the whole color variety of 80 weight? Um, we don't have all of them, but we um, we have a lot of them in any color you want. You just put a comment on YouTube or my Facebook or Stitch Squad on Facebook, and I will order it. It's not a big deal. It shouldn't take too long to get, um, but we have a lot of colors. And then we also have a case that has, I don't know, 40 or 50 um, just for like a variety. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a couple of boxes of it. So... Um, that's a way to start. Um, I would recommend getting one or two mm -hmm. colors. Make sure you like it before you buy a ton, mm -hmm. but I'm always open to mm -hmm. ordering new colors. The one that you have that would absolutely recommend, regardless of what people were gonna use it for, is the set that they came out with called Calm, C-A-L-M, and it's got five spools, all neutrals in there a gray, a taupe, a white cream, I would absolutely recommend starting with something like that because you can use it for a ton of things. So I'll check the quantity on that and if we're sold out, I'll order some today. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what our quantity is on that. Oh, I'll so you mean not, I might have bought the last one yesterday. Oops. Uh, <laughs> well, three or five. yeah, we have like three to five, so I'll order some more. But that's a really good way to start and introduce yourself to the threads with colors that you'll absolutely use. And what is your favorite batting to use, Carrie? Oh, I switch around a lot. Um, and I, it's not because I have a preference. I just like trying different battings for different things and different weights. I love wool batting. It is so lightweight and just quilts weigh nothing. I use a lot of 80-20. Um, I like the 100% cottons. I use the bamboo cotton blends. Uh, and I've been playing with both uh, the 50 wool, 50 cotton by Tuscany Hobbs. So yeah, I'm I'm an equal opportunity batting user. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Um, and oh, this was just a, a cool comment. I thought Evelyn on YouTube said that she actually makes the pin cushions to display uh, watches at her jewelry store. Oh, how cool is that? Let's do that. Let's do that. Oh my I gosh. like that idea. My watch, I actually lost my watch last week for like two weeks and I found it, so I'm so excited. It was like by my bed. <gasps> Look, oh my gosh. How was it by your bed and you lost it? It was like between the like the nightstand. Okay. It was like back here and it was like okay. hanging off. <laughs> And I kept thinking, where? I mean, I knew I didn't lose it. Oh my gosh, I could just set that at my desk and I would always know what time it is. <laughs> She's a genius. Oh That's great. <laughs> I'd have to make one first. <laughs> and Patricia on YouTube wants to know what fabrics did you use in the modern summer moon? A day in Paris, uh, modern background basics, and some Zen Chic uh, solids, and a couple of grunges. And Diona Payne, she's one of our YouTube members, she wants to know, Miss Rosie, do you starch all of your fabric like Kimberly does? Most of it. Uh, I really do. <laughs> Every now but and then. But do you do it where I, like you spray it and you hang it? I like, spray it and hang it. You do. And okay. the, <laughs> even mini charms and charm squares, um, I don't hang those. I got one of those, um, you know, sweater drying racks. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I got one of those, I think, like at Ikea, and I couldn't figure out how I was going to keep the stuff to fall, from falling oh, through, yeah. so I got some um, uh, cooling racks for baking you know, cookies. They have, like, the grid. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got some of those inexpensive at Home Goods. At <laughs> Home Goods. And I got zip ties, and I zip tied four of them together, and it fits just nicely on top of the dry rack and so I can just lay stuff out and spray and then I'll stack and spray and then you let them dry the if you press with steam you absolutely should starch or do something because sometimes you spray it and you can see it shrinking in it always shrinks in the width just a tiny little bit and if you shrink if you pre starch your charm packs or your jelly rolls your lay cakes they are gonna they're gonna shrink 
So you have to keep that in mind if your pattern is for a jelly roll mm -hmm. um, and you need the full two and a half, do not starch mm -hmm. because it will shrink. And that's why sometimes I, yeah, I can't do that. But now do you get them that they're as stiff as Lisa Bonjean does? Yep. Oh, I swear, her jelly roll strips, you could stand them up. <laughs> yeah, you could. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, Kimberly, Julie C. really wants to know what your nail polish color is. Oh, Aruba something. I can look next. Um, Aruba something. It's, it's OPI. Aruba something. It had Aruba in the name. And Janet wants to know if we sell crushed walnut shells, and if not, any ideas where to get them? Um, can I answer that later? I don't know the answer. I know at one time we did. Um, I think we do, but I really don't know off the top of my head. But if we don't, I can get them in stock. Um, so I will be right on that right after this video. <laughs> I know at one time we did, um, and we had some issues with quality maybe or something or delivery. So I'll, I'll look into it. Uh, and back to Carrie, what sewing machine do you use? I have old Bernina's. Um, I keep telling myself I'm gonna get a newer one, uh, but I have old Bernina's. How many? Ah, this is See, always. I, knew I it. just oh, I always hate this question because I used to think, oh, who needs more than one sewing machine? I am now the lady with eight sewing machines. Um, I have four Bernina's, two <laughs> featherweights an old 99 and I have one of the Sashiko machines, the baby lock Sashiko. Have you used yours yet? Yeah. <laughs> I gotta figure it out. After the last video where I messed everything up, I have to figure it out. The, we might be able to talk that the one thing that have gotten better at is threading it um, and a few things. I did get mine out of the box, though. I have a couple friends who bought them who haven't gotten them out of the box yet. So, so yes, I have eight sewing machines. The funniest part is my newest one, newest, that I bought three years ago is almost 70 years old, and that's an old Bernina. So, but it sews like a dream. It weighs 4,000 pounds, but, you know. And what weight of thread do you recommend for machine quilting? Um, for the pin cushions, 80 weight. Most I don't do a lot of machine quilting, but when I do pillows and if I'm doing bags, I use 80 weight. Um, I've played a little bit with the 40 weight, and I'm really, really looking forward to using 28 and 30 weight in the Sashiko. So. And is Featherweight a brand or a kind of machine? Featherweights are the old Singer sewing machines, the little ones that they started making them, oh, I want to say it was like around 1920, somewhere around there, maybe 1930s. And they made them through, I think, about 1960. And they very collectible, very cute. Um, they sew really fast. Um, mm -hmm. I sew really fast, and um, I go and sew with Lori once a year. And I was like, how is she sewing so fast? It was like faster than my Juki. I could, uh -huh. I, she was running circles around mm -hmm. me. And I, yeah, they well, go fast. I mean, they, I don't know what's going on on that side of the room, mm -hmm. but it was, and I sew really fast, but mm -hmm. yeah. It's like just. Now she has them I in really cool colors too. Oh, she don't, yeah. <laughs> Red, blue, black, green. Maybe I bought her a couple. <laughs> yeah, maybe we have bought, you know, we buy them for the photo shoots. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, like we will buy a specific one mm -hmm. just so that it's in a picture on one uh -huh. page of a book, which is <laughs> ridiculous. But she uses them. I mean, she, and mm -hmm. she has like, uh, yeah, but I, I, I couldn't believe how fast they were. Uh -huh. um, I had, I mean, I've never used one. Mm -hmm. But I was just like, oh my goodness, what is she doing over there? And she was like, oh, it's just a machine. Mm -hmm. No, they. Uh, and everyone says they're like, just they just glide. Or? They do. They're they're the kind of machine that if you sew with them and they get used regularly, they just sew better and better and better. Um, they're, they're they're nice little machines. They're fun. I don't want to say they're fun to play with, but. They're, but they they're just cute. <laughs> and 
it featherweight the name came from because in the case it's still like 15 pounds you know my Bernina's 40 so yeah and with Lori's just like some people asked her I know people are gonna ask on the video but um, some of hers are painted by hand by her mm -hmm. husband Carrie cool so some of those are like you can't at one point somebody was like trying to find the specific one she had uh -huh. and they were like emailing us and I was like oh no he painted that and I mean like when I say painted I mean he painted mm -hmm. even around like the singer logo uh -huh. like yeah well and that's it the featherweights came in black there was a tan version that was sold I think that was the one in Britain and then there's one that was sold somewhere else that everybody calls white but it's actually a pale mint green those were the original but you can get them now yes they're Places that they'll do it like almost auto painting mm -hmm. and amazing cool colors and yes you're um, yeah they're not inexpensive they're beautiful but they're not inexpensive <laughs> all right and highly covetable wow <laughs> Uh, Teresa says, I always have issues when I do the sew and flip technique. Most of my blocks will be okay, but some are always off. Do you have any tips? Um, we're going to talk about that quite a bit in the video, uh, videos, because it's used fairly, it's used quite a bit. A um, couple of things. I think there's some tools that are really good. Um, the simple folded corners ruler by Doug, that, Lico. by Doug Lico that one helps a lot because you can trim it there's also a method that you can even oversize it and trim it down I think some of the problems come from pressing that you'll get a little too aggressive I know that's first. my problem yeah. set your seam first before you press it mm -hmm. well and that's it because I I know it, I do it anyways. I use yep. the edge of the iron yep. to push it, and so I'm creating the problem. And I'm not saying that's what she's doing, but sometimes that's what it comes down to. And sometimes I'll stitch a little bit to one mm -hmm. side, to the mm -hmm. like, to one side, just because my thread is thick. Uh -huh. So I'll go a little bit, like, to the right. Mm -hmm. And it's, <laughs> we all think we can eyeball it. Yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> it's, if you don't draw the line, then you really need to use a seam guide and get good at right. doing it, or use like the simple folded corners ruler where you're gonna trim the corner and then it's just your seam allowance. Yeah, there's lots of seam guides. Uh, Quilt in a Day has one, mm -hmm. Lori Holt has several in several colors. I use washi tape on mm -hmm. my, my, um, my bed, just, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that just the greatest invention for marking on sewing yes. machines? And then when I tape. clean the machine, I have to like redo it. And I feel like I spend so much time aligning it perfectly, but yeah. <laughs> it works. All right, and then question about the walnut shells. Do you put them directly in the pin cushion or put a liner and then put it all in the cushion? Um, because I have quilted the front and the back, I don't need to worry about a liner. If you're not quilting it or both the front and the back I probably would use a liner especially if you're going to use some, uh, sand sand in particular you do need either quilted lining one or the other and this is a perfect way these pin cushions one of the most questions that Lily and I get every week is what do you do with your leftovers what do you do with your scraps mm -hmm. right here Yep. Another example, like I came up with the patchwork pin wheels, actually Jocelyn did, but um, you know, it's just a way to use up uh -huh. all your leftovers. Cause that's like the number one question every week that Lily asks, what do you do with your leftovers? And this mm -hmm. is like perfect. Mm -hmm. And would you use only one machine per project or switch machines during projects? <laughs> uh, you know, I I have switched machines and projects simply be out of necessity. I know if you have machines that have a re that you know have a variation in a seam allowance, then yes, I would stay with one machine. But if if you're really good about knowing what your seam allowance is, using a seam guide, marking your scant quarter inch seam allowance, if I probably wouldn't worry about that as much, um, mostly because if you're using the same threads, I think threads have as much effect 
on seam allowance and sizes and pieces as anything else. So, your foot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah, and that's honestly, that's the perfect thing. For most machines, you can buy a quarter inch quilter's foot. They're usually a skosh big, just because the feed dogs, how wide they've gotten, that you have to mark or there has to be some line and it's usually smaller than what that foot is. I know the Bernina foot, it needs a pass on a metal grinder. Just one will probably do, but it's a skosh too big. Uh, and Doris says, can you use them as a pressing hem? Um, these, you probably could. Um, you'd need it a little bit. You just have to make a really big one. Um, but you could. All right. And do you ever use glide thread? I'm not sure what glide thread is. So glide thread is used... Um, me and Lori use, I mean, me and Lori, me and Carrie use Arthel almost exclusively, mm -hmm. but Glide Thread is a newer brand. It's by a company called Hab and Dash, and it, mm -hmm. a lot of long arm quilters use it because it has, mm -hmm. it's a little bit thicker and it has like a sheen to it. Oh. And so we carry it at Fat Quarter Shop mm -hmm. now just because we had so many requests for it. But I do, I could be speaking out of turn. I believe it is more a long arm thread. Mm -hmm. um, it is sold in those big cones, but I believe it's more for the quilting part of it, which mm -hmm. Lori, I mean, Carrie and I like send off our quilts <laughs> to everybody. <laughs> so, um, and I don't even care what my long arm quilter uses. I just care about mm -hmm. the color. Mm -hmm. But it's more of a newer, um, mm -hmm. I just kind of heard about it this year because we had so many, but it has some kind of sheen or some kind of, mm -hmm. I don't know, people like the whatever it is. Is it, it even that it could be like pre-coated, like quilting thread? It looks, yeah, it's like uh -huh. just really, pre it has like a uh -huh. shine to it. Okay. And I don't know if glide means it glides through, but it is mm -hmm. a long arm thread. Uh -huh. um, I've never used it, but we had so many requests that we, we carry it. But yeah, mm -hmm. we use Arthel, so. And we actually have a new YouTube member that just joined. Yay! Yay! So welcome, welcome. Um, and, then and I became a member, guys, because I don't know what I'm doing. And so I don't know, like, all these questions you guys ask, I don't understand. So I had Lily, she had to, like, come to my office, figure out how to create an account for 